Morning prayer for Tuesday the 23rd of August. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As the dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. This week we're reading through Ephesians, uh, using the translation by Tom Wright in his uh, Bible for Everyone. Today we're reading chapter 2. <clears throat> so where do you come into it all? Well, you were dead because of your offences and sins. That was the road you used to travel, keeping in step with the world's present age. In step, too, with the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is, even now at work among the people whose lives, lit, whose lives consist of disobeying God. Actually, that's how all of us used to behave, conditioned by physical desires. We used to do whatever our flesh and our minds were urging us to do. What was the result? We too were subject to wrath in our natural state, just like everyone else. But when it comes to mercy, God is rich. He had such great love for us that he took us at the very point where we were dead through our offences and made us alive together with the king. Yes, you were saved by sheer grace. He raised us up with him and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in King Jesus. This was so that in the ages to come he would show, ju he would show just how unbelievably rich his grace is the kindness he has shown us in King Jesus. How has all this come about? You have been saved by grace through faith. This doesn't happen on its own initiative. It's God's gift. It isn't on the basis of works, so no one is able to boast. This is the explanation. God has made us what we are. God has created us in King Jesus for the good works he has prepared ahead of time as the road we must travel. So then, remember this. In human terms, that is, in your flesh, you are Gentiles. You are the people who the so-called so circumcision referred to as the so-called uncircumcision. Circumcision, of course, being something done by humans to human flesh. Well, once upon a time, you were separated from the king. You were detached from the community of Israel. You were foreigners to the covenant which, you, which contained the promise. There you were, in the world with no hope and no God. But now, in King Jesus, you have been brought near to the king's blood. Near in the king's blood. Yes, you, who used to be a long way away. He is our peace, you see. He has made the two to be one. He has pulled down the barrier, the dividing wall, that turns us into enemies of each other. He has done this in his flesh by abolishing the law with its commandments and instructions. The point of doing all this was to create in him one new human being out of the two so making peace. God was reconciling both of us to himself in a single body 
through the cross by killing the enmity in him. So the Messiah came and gave the good news. Peace had come. Peace, that is, for those of you who were a long way away. And peace, too, for those who were close at hand. Through him, you see, we both have access to the Father in the one Spirit. This is the result. You are no longer foreigners or strangers. No, you are fellow citizens with God's holy people. You are members of God's household. You are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with King Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole building is fitted together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. You too are being built up together in him into a place where God will live by the Spirit. This is the end of our reading. We'll pray for the needs of the day, for ourselves, for the things that lie ahead of us, the tasks that we uh, are called to do, the people that we'll see and meet, the people on our hearts and minds. pray for ourselves that we might be aware of God in us and through us that we might have the courage to love to be peacemakers to be a people of forgiveness and grace to show mercy to give as we have received Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the world and its needs. For our local communities, for the people around us, for the people that we know. The strangers that we see and hear of. We pray for those who are struggling to make ends meet, to pay their bills and their f- buy food, to live in this cost of living crisis. We pray for the eyes to see, the ears to hear, the courage to share and support one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The collect for the day. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.